Good morning, everyone. So uh, thank you for tuning in uh, live to our May Showcase 2022 here in Singapore. My name is David, David Sim, and I'm the Southeast Asia Innovation and Development Manager from May May. And I'm also the moderators for the segment titled Winning Partnership for Star Formation. With me today, Jessie, Jessie Tong. Uh, she's our main speaker for today's uh, topic. So Jessie is currently the Center Director of Consumer Chemical Technology Center, in short CCTC at Singapore Polytechnic. She had established the center in 2019 and today CCTC is on ESG supported center of innovation. The center has a primary role and the aim is to help SMEs and startups productize and also commercialize. Jessie also is um, the Deputy Director of the School of Chemical Life Sciences where she oversees a number of diploma in the consumer care, biomedical and food sector in the polytechnic. The school caters to training for both students undergoing pre-employment training and adult learners seeking to upgrade themselves. Right. Okay, so um, I think without further ado, I'll just pass on to uh, Jessie and then she will keep, uh, go through today's uh, presentation and also introduction to CCTC. Thank you so much, David. That is, uh, so good. It's a real pleasure to be here today this morning with you and thank you for inviting me uh, to start off or kick off the uh, discussion we have in the morning yeah uh, so uh maybe we can switch to the presentation mode for us to share about what we have in the uh, consumer chemical technology center located at singapore polytechnic okay as uh, david has mentioned the uh, consumer chemical technology center based in singapore polytechnic was established in 2019 late sometime in December, and we actually uh, are quite known for the fact that we launch or have many training programs customized or catered to the perfumery and cosmetic science sector. But over the years, we actually received a lot of industry requests uh, for us to support local companies to productize and develop uh, different innovations. As a result, we set up this uh, technology innovation center within SP and eventually managed to secure funding from Enterprise Singapore for us to become a center of innovation to see how we can help local companies grow and thrive. So the Consumer Chemicals Tech Center actually brings to us an end-to-end -end ecosystem as well. Some of the areas we actually seek partnership or support from other companies like what we do with Name uh, to look at how we can support other companies when it comes to solutioning or offering uh, uh, services that we can provide in different ways to support companies in their growth. Some of the solutions that we have worked with, uh, I would like to share at CCTC includes the following. We look at how we can help companies develop eco-friendly and sustainable solutions. Uh, in, and we have actually established a product range called an Hydra's Beauty uh, product range. We also look at how when we develop formulations for companies, uh, they need to be uh, clean and ethical and res responsibly sourced. We also are working with another company, SME, called uh, the Nova Sciences. And uh, in this partnership, we develop our very own 3D skin model such that we can do away with animal testing. And this skin model is customized to the Asian context. So using this skin model, we can check on the penetration of different actives through the skin without having to uh, test on light animals. And last but not least, our formulations or our solutions developed for our companies will be owned by the company. And we hope that this will help the company grow, not just in terms of launching products, but developing capabilities. The end-to-end -end ecosystem that I mentioned earlier tries to plug gaps for SMEs or startups or even MNCs that come to us. So anything from product design all the way to marketing, uh, as long as we can help companies plug any of these gaps, whether it's through uh, offering services at CCTC or even referring companies to other companies, maybe other OEM manufacturers for scale up, other companies to do efficacy testing, we try to see how best we can support our partners that come to us and eventually help them launch product in the market. So this is evident during the pandemic when everybody suddenly 
there is a huge wave of interest in the areas of hand sanitizers. So CCTC came in and uh, conducted various virucidal tests to give companies assurance that their products are able to uh, uh, able to offer the efficacy that the hand sanitizers claim and enable the distribution of different products in the market during the pandemic. So this is an example of how we come in to offer support in different times so that uh, solutioning for companies become uh, easy, easier, they can enter market easier and this shorten markets, market to entry time and uh, reduces the barrier. Okay, what are the capabilities that we can offer that companies can tap on? So this is a summarized view and our aim is actually to help companies become competitive for them to become productive and uh, connected as well as skillful. So how do we do this? Uh, we have many schools, about 10 schools in Singapore Polytechnic as well as other centers, one of which is the Consumer Insight Center that companies can tap on. So if you would like to conduct consumer insights research, you can actually uh, come to our user experience center or school of business to look at how we conduct consumer insights uh, before you penetrate or enter a market or even expand your product portfolio uh, as well. So this is a service that uh, is quite uh, popular among some companies uh, that we have uh, service over the years. Um, companies are also, uh, can also leverage on what we have, for example, in terms of our facilities as well as our equipment, our students and the ecosystem that we have established on campus as mentioned earlier. So facilities and equipment, it can be a short-term collaboration or a more long-term one where we form joint labs. Uh, in terms of short-term collaboration, if you have, say, a product you want to develop within the next few months, you can come and talk to us and we can see if our resources can support your uh, requirement to develop your product in SP. Uh, otherwise, you can also look upon student projects or interns as well as staff to help you work on the projects uh, and as a result, uh, build capability for your companies. Um, a very popular mode of collaboration would be in the form of consultancy services where uh, uh, our staff will be the ones working on different areas to help you if you don't have the technical expertise. So for example, you can come to us and say, hey, I want to develop a shampoo. And what we can do for you is not just look at the formulation, but also look at how, uh, uh, you know, we can look at efficacy of the product, we can test the product for shelf life, conduct stability testing, as well as conduct a simple user acceptance test to look at how uh, consumers receive the product that you are about to launch um, and eventually what we have developed at SP we will look at how we license to the company for them to have full ownership of the formulation so that is our target so there are many areas that we can look at for collaboration and if training is one of them you can also come to us in the development of your formulation we will also spend we can also spend some time sharing with you what goes behind the formulation and why we put in certain ingredients to help you understand uh, beyond just launching a product to know what is behind the science of developing that particular product with us. Uh, we work closely with ASTAR. Um, they are more focused on the upstream. They have actors that they extract. They have technologies like encapsulation. And we come in to look at how we can translate this into a final product and eventually in partnership with ASTAR we look at how we can benefit companies uh, uh, at the end of the day. Uh, an example I would like to share, uh, as all our partnerships are catered to different companies and customized differently, depending on the company and their needs. For example, uh, I would like to share the Nova today. So the Nova forms a joint lab with us in SP. They offer shared facilities and we have a shared uh, equipment uh, system that we tap on each other uh, and we also work together to develop the Asian 3D skin model where we try to alleviate or eliminate animal testing for the region. The Nova taps on our students uh, in terms of product development as well as taking interns and staff to develop capabilities uh, both ways for both students and staff. 
And last but not least, they also are part of our ecosystem where they can offer support to other companies uh, to, uh, for efficacy tests or for toxicological tests or clinical trials uh, in order to help companies launch products in the market. And last but not least, we want to see how as a company we can help the mobile grow, not just within Singapore, but regionally. Uh, in SP, we pride ourselves in training courses and we offer a slew of comprehensive training courses with different varying lengths and certifications uh, in SP. So we have career conversion programs that helps company defray hiring costs for a certain limited period of time, which is the career conversion program for specialty chemicals. We also offer formal diploma programs such as the specialist diploma program as well as the advanced diploma program. So um, adult learners can look forward to having certification. And we have uh, uh, a more short-term uh, type of courses, such as the modular courses in perfumery and cosmetic science, as well as the project-based learning, where you learn alongside uh, formulating a product with us. And not, last but not least, of course, we have our diploma in perfumery and cosmetic science that is offered uh, from Singapore Polytechnic that caters to the beauty and personal care sector. Yeah. So to summarize, uh, to look at all the uh, offerings that we have. So anything from training, whether it's formal or customized training, to project-based learning, it's a hybrid of training as well as project where you learn while you formulate your product with us. We are also a solutioning platform and we use students, our facilities and equipment to support companies over and above consultancy services where you can engage our staff. In terms of research, we can also collaborate to tap on agency grants, whether it's grants from MOE or grants from other uh, uh, agencies that offer uh, such grant support. It could be also companies as well uh, to see how we can uh, develop innovative solutions to help companies plug gaps. And last but not least, what we aim to do at SP is to build a community where we can support each other as an end-to-end -end industry ecosystem uh, together with agencies and companies to help uh, uh, the industry try to grow, whether it's in Singapore or beyond. So this is what we have to offer at this key. So uh, thank you so much, Jesse, for the very insightful uh, presentation of share and also walking through with us on the introduction of the capabilities of CCTC. Yeah. So um, we know Jesse uh, has a very solid experience in the uh, beauty industry. So we also like to check what are some of the market trends that is, that is related to the personal care and also the uh, beauty industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the beauty personal care is one of the areas that evolved uh, tremendously over the past year. And uh, innovations are, are, are really something that we look forward to. And every day, uh, there are new product launches in the market or uh, some tweaking in the formulation that's happening in the region. So perhaps I can highlight some of the key areas uh, that we see that there's a lot of activity based on the experience that we see at uh, the Consumer Chemical Technology Center at Singapore Polytechnic. So first and foremost, we see that there is a lot of emphasis or interest in the areas of health and wellness. In the past, beauty is very much on aesthetics, but lately it's also about health and wellness. Um, there, is a, um, there is an interest to look at science-backed data when products are being launched. For example, if there is a claim that an active can deliver a particular, uh, uh, say, benefit, then what is the science behind this that uh, can substantiate the claim to help? And consumers are more savvy. Uh, they are also uh, quite knowledgeable and they have access to a lot of this information online nowadays. So as a result, they are actually uh, quite demanding uh, in terms of looking at the products that they want to choose and use. Uh, so there's a lot of interest in actives uh, that not just helps uh, in delivering uh, the efficacy that is stated, but also uh, they are really they are able to work uh, uh, as what they say. 
and not just oh I say I do this but actually it doesn't so they are actually more knowledgeable and able to uh, more affluent as well able to afford better quality products and hence the expectation of a cosmetic product is higher so we see areas such as uh, thermal cosmetics uh, gaining a lot of popularity and actives are no longer just actives that we buy but actives that actually have a story uh, that have a claim uh, to support when uh, consumers look at the product. So uh, this is one key area, which is health and safety. Another key area is, of course, uh, uh, inflation and the pandemic, which has a huge impact on consumers. And uh, the pandemic has caused a lot of disruption in terms of supply chain as well. So when we look at a cosmetic product or an ingredient, we want it to be multifunctional and uh, hopefully the formulation is minimalist. So these are, are some of the key trends uh, because uh, you don't need to uh, buy maybe five actives to deliver the same uh, efficacy or claim. Perhaps one active can do multiple and you can limit yourself to do two actives you know, that has different properties. And as a result, you reduce your reliance on the supply chain and also reduce your costs due to the growing inflation. So these are, this is another key trend that we observe. Um, the third key trend would be in terms of uh, consumers becoming more affluent and knowledgeable. They are also more conscious. So sustainable products are key. They also uh, look at, uh, uh, companies also look at people beyond profit. Uh, and they know that this appeals to our uh, millennial generation as well as Gen Z. So what this means is looking at products that does not harm the environment, uh, that is sustainable, ethically sourced, and responsible. So this is uh, in line with conscious beauty, which is a key area or trend that we also feel that will continue to grow and strengthen in the next few years. Right. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, we also reckon on the active part where we see the consumer awareness getting more and more uh, conscious as well. Yeah. So besides all these uh, marketing trends that you have highlighted, mm -hmm. any formulation site or trends that you see or want to share with us as well? Yes, I can share some of the work that we do at uh, Consumer Chemical Tech Center at SP. Um, uh, we have a range that we are developing for companies called the Anhydrous Beauty Range. And uh, this technology removes water from the formulation. And it has helped some of our companies actually reach out globally international, to international markets. So in this anhydrous beauty concept, what we try to do is by re removing water, we don't need to transport water and this reduces the carbon footprint. So in this sense, it's more sustainable and eco-friendly. Uh, so not just looking at products like cleansers or shampoos, we extend beyond that and move towards even uh, uh, leaf on products like moisturizers lotions and serums to become waterless. So we believe that uh, this technology really uh, benefits companies in, in terms of logistics uh, by reducing carbon footprint as mentioned earlier. And at the same time, it does not compromise on the uh, efficacy or the delivery of the product when the consumers use them. So it's still able to uh, give you the feel that you're using a serum or a cleanser or a shampoo. It doesn't remove uh, the foaming capability of your shampoo or your cleanser. And the magic is really in the technology that is developed and the expertise that goes into a product that gives you the same sensory, uh, not compromising on sensory and efficacy while uh, taking care of the environment and uh, uh, looking at sustainability. So the next next technology offered beyond Anhydrous Beauty is when companies come to us even if they are not very uh, familiar with uh, products that offer uh, maybe uh, benefits beyond, say, uh, they're not familiar with sustainable uh, concepts. Uh. Uh, when companies come to us, we straight away try to choose ingredients that are eco-friendly, sustainable and responsible when we develop our products and, and transfer this capability to uh, companies. Yeah. Um, this is because I think beauty, compared to maybe countries like UK or US, they are really quite advanced, or even Portugal, they are quite advanced over there. But in Singapore, we are still growing. We are taking baby steps. We just started a center of innovation. Companies are coming in, 
uh, to invest in Singapore. So we want to continue to build on this. And what we can do is continually help to conduct training, to educate our users, our industry, and also educate our consumers when they are using the product, how, what it is like to develop a sustainable formulation, what it is like uh, to, uh, what is the environment, environmental impact when we introduce a specific factor. Yeah, so in the process of operating a project as a consultancy, we already try to incorporate all this and subtly educate the company as we go along. Mm. Very interesting point that you mentioned about the uh, uh, anhydrous UV range, especially on the part where the leaf oil, because usually we always see the rainsaw is uh, dominating the waterless market. Uh, it's, it's very seldom that we see this uh, leaf on concept. Uh, so very interesting uh, insight that you share with us. Um, so beside this, um, how has uh, we also like to know like uh, how has the beauty industry evolved like over the past five to ten years that you have observed so far? Mm. Oh, yeah, the beauty industry really really changed over the years. I still remember as a little kid, you know, when we talk about beauty products and cosmetics, it's about enhancing uh, our the aesthetics uh, to make us look better. But nowadays, the beauty culture is quite different. Yeah, as mentioned earlier, people look at wellness of the skin, looking at how to enhance the skin barrier, looking at how to treat eczema, and looking at um, if I use a particular product, will it sensitize my skin? So the beauty culture has evolved because consumer, as I mentioned, has become more affluent and knowledgeable. So the beauty culture is no longer about just looking pretty, but uh, maybe looking at how we enhance our beauty, uh, uh, prolong uh, our use, yeah, and uh, use products that uh, help us age slower, age gracefully. Yeah. yeah. Um, then there's also uh, uh, I think beauty gadgets is something that pop up in the five ten years. We look at Foreo with a whole slew of you know different gadgets to target uh, sagging skin or skin brightness. Uh, yeah, so beauty gadgets is also becoming an in thing in the last five to ten years, and uh, to enhance the use of deep on products. Uh, uh, yeah, and also maybe to help in penetration. And uh, we also see a lot more of the consumers become more daring. Uh, a lot more aesthetic clinics opening up, and uh, the visits to these clinics and dermatologists are also flourishing. So uh, people look at uh, non-invasive procedures uh, to achieve the same effect as compared to the past, where some of these options or these improvements need to be made surgically. So uh, another key area that I see five to ten years uh, that is really evolving is in the use of AI, artificial intelligence, which is really booming, uh, and uh, looking at how consumers purchase you know, uh, using the AI platform, understanding the consumer profile, their needs, and then uh, proposing solutions based on the algorithm or the feedback that the customer is, uh, uh, how they are using the product, or even the mood of a consumer when they use a product, how can the AI help in determining that? And how can, the, uh, how can AI be used in marketing platforms? Uh, when you see specific advertisement being uh, uh, fed to your mobile phone uh, and they know which particular area you are interested in. So these are some of the key differences five to ten years ago that uh, I have personally observed. Uh, maybe the list is uh, more than what I know, but, but just to share a few today. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah, we also see the the rise of these uh, enhancement uh, leaf on of the uh, beauty gadgets, uh, non-invasive uh, treatments, and also the future of AI that helps us with the selection of the beauty industries and products. Yeah. Okay, so I think for now we can move on to our Q&A session, um, <clears throat> where we, we, will, we will have a question coming in from the live audience, and then we will um, uh, ask it across to uh, Jesse and then she can help to uh, address some of these. Okay, um, we have one question coming in. Okay. So, as a new startup looking to develop 
our own uh, natural and eco-friendly skincare, but with limited product formulation or know-how, how would the first step for us to work with CCTC to make things uh, happen? Yeah. Okay, and this is from Chloe. Chloe. Ah, oh, thank you for your question, Chloe. It's a very good question. So, um, if you come to uh, Consumer Chemicals Technology Center, we would recommend that you take on our program, uh, project-based learning, which is uh, what we call a STAR series. Uh, STAR stands for uh, Skills and Technology Adoption Readiness Program. And in this program, you will come in to learn about uh, the product that you want to launch. And we will explain to you why we use the ingredients that is used to develop your particular formulation. And uh, we will explain the whole process from start to uh, stability to efficacy and sensory evaluation. Then if you have any questions during that process, uh, we will uh, be able to clarify. Uh, the class size is very small to give you privacy and uh, to protect the, uh, the formulation uh, which is a recipe that belongs exclusively to the company. So the formulator is very experienced. He's able to answer your questions as you go along to develop your formulation with us. So that is the first step that I would recommend. And subsequently, you can take on a consultancy service project at SP. And this is where our staff will tweak your formulation to your requirement. Or even uh, before we tweak the formulation, we can even engage the user experience center to run a survey or focus group discussion on your target market, understand them better, understand their needs, and then uh, propose a workable formulation or idea or innovation to be incorporated before you launch your product. So once the formulation is established, uh, the staff has given you uh, your 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 first tweet, your first formulation, you can conduct your user acceptance test on your own, maybe your personal family and friends. And after that, uh, based on your feedback, you can then tweak the formulation again uh, to maybe finalize it and make it better. Eventually run a stability test for you and uh, uh, recommend a scale up manufacturer so that you can bring this formulation and uh, look at companies that can help you scale up. Uh, look at packaging, look at marketing or branding stories as well and before you launch uh, the product officially in the market. So uh, it's quite a lengthy step uh, from start to finish but along the way we will walk with you, uh, guide you and tell you hey this is the time to do this, this is the time to check on regulatory requirements, this is the time to maybe do some efficacy testing because your ingredient is new. So we will walk with you every product is unique, every uh, uh, formulation that we develop is customized. So this is uh, something that we uh, hope that we can help companies do eventually when, uh, before they launch, whether locally or even regionally. Yeah. That's a very important uh, knowledge that we can leverage on to understand on the know-how and also step-by-step -step, uh, going to be uh, productized and also commercialized at the end. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, uh, we, we, we have a question as well, uh, asking about uh, how, how has the social media impact on our beauty trend as well? Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, this is again one of the trends I left out earlier, the 5 to 10 you know, years yep. that involve. Uh, social media is so happening. It's really one of the key platforms that uh, uh, industry or companies are looking at to promote their products. Influencers are becoming very uh, important really influential people in the market. Um, so you will see names that you are not familiar with and become household names and people look at these influencers before they decide on purchasing particular products. And yeah, I myself follow quite a few of these influencers online and they really, uh, some of them are quite uh, knowledgeable in the industry and they do share their own personal preferences. So I see some influencers that promote the use of uh, sustainable actives and they are very uh, into non-animal testing for example. So uh, we do see that this form of social media platform using influencers really make a difference and uh, even in 
online platforms, I think during the pandemic, really grew during this period and the sales did not uh, dwindle even though we are all locked up at home. In fact, the online platforms saw significant rise, especially in the busy personal care sector and companies really see huge profit margins, especially in skincare uh, in the last three years. Yeah, so uh, social media is really a key area uh, and a vehicle uh, for the beauty personal care sector to uh, leverage on, uh, to grow and also to reach out to the global markets internationally, not limiting themselves to just Singapore. Okay, so staying at home during the pandemic really uh, uh, give rise to all these uh, social media impacts in the beauty industry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll just see more questions coming in. So, uh, so what is the opinion on clean cosmetic? Is it better than uh, ordinary cosmetic? Yeah. Clean cosmetic actually is a concept uh, yeah. uh, uh, where we look at how the product is not harmful to human health. Right. Yeah, and also harmful uh, to maybe environment. Um, so having letting it be clean actually is more a social responsible uh, 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 need uh, from the person who actually developed the formulation. So he feels that uh, I want to. I mean, uh, the sh shampoo can still be a shampoo. I can develop the shampoo uh, in the way I choose my ingredients anyhow I want. I don't need to be particularly worried about how it impacts the human health or environment or so on. Yeah. But being uh, having clean beauty concepts uh, will actually tailor the mindset to look beyond just profits, to look beyond uh, uh, me, myself and I. So to look at uh, how does it impact the human health if I introduce this and how does it make it better for everybody else and not just for me uh, when I use a particular shampoo or body wash or cleanser uh, per se. So this uh, clean beauty, I believe, is uh, really more, uh, you know, uh, it helps the uh, greater good right. as compared to just creating a cosmetic and I just use, anyhow use whatever I want. Yeah, so it's uh, more altruistic in some ways. Mm. Agreeable. <laughs> yeah, clean cosmetic is always good for personal health, uh, the safety, and also for the overall environment. Yes, that's right. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe just a, uh, I see any question. Uh, or maybe I have a, have a question as well. So just like you mentioned about the SP causes on the longer, longer term mm. causes that you have, or the shorter causes, or for people in the industry who wanted to widen their knowledge in the cosmetic mm. industry. Any example on the curriculum that you are having for all the long term or short term mm. uh, that you want to share with the audience as well? Okay. So uh, in the specialist state and advanced state, they, right. uh, the specialist state is actually catered to maybe adult uh, learners who right. actually join the industry but with no knowledge in perfumery or cosmetic science. So they can join the night class and this night class offers you an insights into the chemistry behind uh, the uh, perfumery and cosmetics. Right. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to maybe an advanced step that actually gives you a formal certification in the form of an advanced diploma, it takes about two years to complete. And it can be a bit more intensive in that there are more fundamental modules to cover. So some of our students have, or, or potential students, have the impression that Perfume and cosmetic science means that I come in to put on makeup and uh, uh, style my hair or perm my hair. Uh, this is not true. So the perfume and cosmetic science courses offered in Singapore Polytechnic is really science-based, uh, but we try to cater and target the beauty and personal care sector. So the more long-term and formal courses that give certification would be the specialist tip as well as the advanced diploma courses. Whereas companies usually don't have the time huh, to come in to one year, two year, you know, to, to complete a course. So then what can they do? Uh, they can tap on the modular courses, which are more short term. They can spend two to three weeks in SP, 
uh, to learn about uh, an overview of the industry, plus some basic fundamental skills that they can acquire in the areas of the formulation of cosmetics as well as uh, in fragrances. Um, uh, we have a apart from industry, we also note that there are a uh, number of indie brands growing locally and uh, SMEs looking at first they are doing pharma or they are into food, they also want to branch out into aesthetics, perhaps because it's more lucrative. And as a result, uh, uh, they, the star program that I mentioned earlier can help because while developing their own product, they learn about the formulation and the science behind the product that they're developing. The last target group that we aim in our training courses would be our own level students. When they complete their own levels, if they are interested to learn about the perfume and cosmetic science, they want to join a flavor and fragrance house of Triple Dawn, learn to become a perfumer or a formulation uh, cosmetic scientist, uh, they can join the diploma in perfume and cosmetic science. And this uh, diploma uh, is uh, in a way a chemistry-based fundamental course, but with applications in perfumes and cosmetics. Yeah. So usually our grad graduates from this diploma would then take on a broad-based chemistry degree program if they were to join a university. And if not, they can go directly to industry with the diploma that we have uh, achieved from SP and start to work uh, uh, in the industry. So one of the areas that I want to share would be in the training of a position or a job role called the evaluator. So evaluator and perfumer in the past uh, is really uh, uh, two vocations that is uh, where we take an aspect to fill. You know, two job roles that are maybe an expert from France or from Hong Kong company to fill. But lately from the training program at Singapore Polytechnic, we see that our students are quite a number of them increasingly an increasing number of, of perfume and cosmetic science students are being trained as evaluators or perfumers. So what this means is we now design our perfume and our evaluator will support the perfumer in the training of uh, uh, in, in the development of a fragrance. This is important because these uh, job roles actually pay quite well uh, and not only that can get locals to fill in these positions. Uh, just like in the formulation of cosmetics, just like uh, evaluators, all these positions are actually, uh, in a way, we don't have much local expertise. So hopefully with this training program that we offer in SP can help these students enter the industry and train more under the experts so that they can become the formulation scientists or the perfumers and evaluators for the industry. So we want to develop our local talents uh, and, and for them to acquire skills that is sought after and in a growing sector. Right. It's uh, very important to build the local talent too as well, build the market uh, yes. for these uh, thriving and dynamic uh, build industry as well. Yes, you are right. Okay, I think we are cautious of the time as well. So uh, I think we have uh, one last question. Okay, so. What is the advice to company looking to launch a cheap but well-performing formulation? So do you have any cost-saving tips uh, for them? Okay, companies yeah. that want to launch a uh, 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 affordable or low-cost kind of a performance uh, performing formulation. Okay, so uh, when companies come to us, if this is their requirement, of course we would first need to do a literature search and to understand uh, the actives or ingredients that are available in the market uh, and then make a proposition to them. One of the key um, propositions that we would consider as mentioned earlier would be in the use of multifunctional ingredients. This can significantly uh, reduce cost. In place of using uh, uh, one ingredient, you can use uh, for, for one purpose, you can use one ingredient for multiple purposes. So this is one of the uh, cost-saving measures that we would propose to the company. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, uh, another way is, uh, I think this is quite standard procedure, is to develop a base formulation and to introduce variants, whether the variants are of different scents or different actives, uh, would also help the company defray costs. So uh, 
for example, we have this company launch a shampoo, and the shampoo has four different uh, uh, actives with four different fragrances to help convey all the subliminal messaging of the product. And uh, in the development of this formulation, because it's only one phase, it significantly reduces the developmental cost for the company to launch the product. Yeah. So this is one of the key measures that companies take. Uh, it's not new. It's been uh, happening, you know, for, for many, many years uh, for companies to look at different ways of using the same base formulation. And for us, uh, we also look at uh, different suppliers because being uh, from Singapore Polytechnic and uh, at CCTC, we have the advantage of being very neutral in the selection of ingredients that we put in a formulation for companies. So it's not like I'm from company X and I can only use ingredients from company X. So I can look at the whole school of uh, different offerings from different suppliers and propose the best for my client. So if cost effective is one of the measures that I'm looking at, then I would select uh, the, the vendor that offers the most cost effective uh, ingredient. But in doing so, I also will tell uh, or advise my client so you will be sacrificing this effect, this effect, because we choose this particular one that is the cheapest or available in the market. So we do try to educate the client. It is an ongoing process that we work with our client in the development of the formulation. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, really hand in hand working in tandem rather than uh, uh, I cook everything in the recipe and then I pass it to you. It's not like that. Yeah. Right. So these are some of the ways we help companies to bring costs. Um, the final way, which is maybe not easy for small companies to do is to go for big sizes, huge quantity to defray the cost. Now. So if you order 100 bottle in packaging versus you order 100,000, the cost is significantly different. So how do you again reduce the cost is maybe you can use the same bottle for different product ranges, you color the bottles differently, you use different labels. Uh, so you have to think ahead, what are the product range that you look at and the concepts when you introduce your product can it fit into that particular packaging yeah the more you order the cheaper the price in terms of packaging yeah. and of course if students are put into the equation it helps again defray the cost because uh, uh, when students work on a, a, a project for the company uh, there is learning involved uh, and at the same time uh, it helps the company with some r d without having to hire uh, real headcount uh, into their workforce. Yeah, it's sort of like um, students are the ones who are who is the extended pair of hands to help them. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much for the very creative <laughs> suggestion and recommendation coming from you on reducing the cost yeah, for making a formulation. Right. Um, I, I think we are well of the time and I want to thank you so much uh, Jesse, for the time to come here and then share with us with all the insight, the market trend, and all these uh, different questions that's coming from the live audience. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, David. Okay.